I know, I know. It's already the second month of the new year. It's too late to be doing these types of videos, right? But if I'm being honest, I really don't go for that whole new year hype. And I think that any time is a good time to work on your goals, even if it happens to be January. But if that happens to be you, and you are here in the early 2023 working on your goals, then congratulations, because you know what? There are so many people out there that aren't even working towards their goals right now, and you are. You are focusing on your goals, you are working towards a better you, and I congratulate you for that, okay? For showing up for you, because it's important. It really is, especially if you are working towards getting the most out of your life and creating more joy and fulfillment, and if you're new around here, that's what I'm all about. So don't let these new year, new you haters make you feel bad for whatever time of year you decide to work on your life. It's your life, you do you boo, okay? On that note, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how I'm prepping for 2023 and just touch on a couple of things I'm focusing on and the areas of my life that I'm focusing on. But I've also been blessed to kick off this new year with a colonoscopy or an endoscopy or whatever they're called. I got the combo package. Um, and so I wanna share a little bit about that experience and how I prepped for that and just any tips that I can share to help someone else with the experience because I literally had no idea what I was getting myself into. I just found that consuming as much information as I could on the topic really helped ease my mind. So I just wanted to share my experience for anyone that might be preparing for a procedure like this in 2023 or beyond. So let's get into it. Now, when it comes to my business, I am really excited to just continue growing my brand, Life by Jamie. And that's on YouTube and Instagram. So I started the Life by Jamie YouTube channel uh, last year sometime, but before that, I started a channel with my boyfriend, and that channel is all revolved around travel, van life more specifically, and like food and like, you know, outdoorsy stuff. So we grew that channel to over 300 subscribers in our first year and over 100,000 views on our channel. I am so proud of that number. I know that that might not seem like a lot to some people, but for me, we were we were gunning for 100 subs in our first year. So my goal for Life by Jamie YouTube is to reach my first 100 subscribers. I'm really hoping to accomplish that in 2023. And then over on Instagram, I recently deleted like over 500 people on my Instagram. It was just like inactive people that started following me like a decade ago and like when Instagram first came out and so I just like was trying to just clear out the old make room for the new I really want to just grow my Instagram account back to 3,000 subscribers of genuine engaged community like-minded people um, so yeah I was happy to just you know clear out some of the people I it honestly was taking more energy to delete all the people than to just focus on growing and it, it's not really about the numbers for me on either of the channels it's more about an engaged community of like-minded people just creating content people are resonating with and that they're vibing with and feeling like I'm making an impact through my content um, and providing lots of value to people so that is my big goal just to continue doing what I'm doing and just just really hone in what I want to speak about and on a personal level, like a personal mindset level, I really just wanna work on my self-trust and my belief. Now, I do have self-trust and belief right now, but I want to increase it. I want to bring myself to another level of that so that I can expand my mind and expand myself to another level in all areas of life. So it's a big growing year, stretching kind of year. Those kind of phases in life when you're stretching and growing can be a bit uncomfortable because you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone a lot. You're challenging your mindset and you're challenging your limited beliefs. And so it can be very uncomfortable moving to another phase in life or another level in life or really just starting to like expand your mindset. But it's a challenge that I'm up for this year. So let's see how I do. So those are my goals and focuses, and I hope that you have made time and space this year to really think about what you want to get out of this year and what you wanna to work towards and the action steps that you're going to take to make the most out of 2023 and to create a year that's going to just let you end this year on a bang, feeling like you left it all on the table and you did your best. Cause that's all we can do is our best. And that includes rest, okay? Disclaimer, before we start talking about all the poop stuff, 
we're going to be talking about poop. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about my poop. So we're heading into the, the area of TMI. And if that's not for you, then click out now. You have been warned. Sorry, not sorry. Okay? Because this is the video that I needed, okay? So I'm making the video that I needed for when I was going through this and I was like Googling everything and I just wish somebody just was here talking about their poop, okay? Okay, so how did I feel before the prep? I was so nervous. It was uncomfortable in a lot of ways. I don't do well with hospitals. They stress me out. I just, I just don't like them. And so that was just a whole other level on top of it. And I knew I was going to have to like be in a lot of areas by myself without my boyfriend. So I was just like dreading it. Going to the hospital in general is something that makes me feel anxious but since I moved to the other side of the world and like my family's not here like so like my friends aren't here like I uh, I just like I don't like it even more. I get nervous about the whole thing but I also get nervous about not having a good doctor or not having good nurses that really makes me feel comfortable and like empathize you know what I mean? I want an empathetic doctor. I want someone who understands that some people just don't do well in these situations and I need my hand held okay? I need you to hold my hand. I just also just wanted to manage my expectations. I wanted to feel like I knew as much as possible so that I could just feel prepared. And it's just like, I just like, when it comes to fear of the unknown, that is something that triggers my anxiety. And I know that that's something that you can't always control. There's always gonna be a level of like not knowing in life. So it's something that like I'm learning to accept and to be better at, but I just knew if I tried knowing as much as I could about what to expect or you know how certain people experienced it, then I would feel a little bit more at ease. Um, so I really just tried to do my research in that aspect. But I just wish that I had found a video like this that where someone was just like real talking their experience and like how bad was it? Like how much did you poop? Like did you sleep? Like all the real talk I needed that I needed that I needed and the, I met a lady at the pharmacy and she she helped me she was a real one I just did my best I asked a lot of questions even if I felt dumb and I just really just tried to take control over my mindset instead of just letting it run rampant with anxiety and fear and like making up scenarios and all of this kind of stuff I really had to like talk myself through this a lot of the time so I just had to remember to be gentle with myself because I was I was acting crazy at times. I was just like, oh my god, this is uh, what's gonna happen? Like I was doing the prep, I was doing the prep perfectly, and I still felt like I was doing it wrong. I'm like, oh my god, what if I'm not supposed to drink this? Like water, you're allowed to drink. It says you're allowed to drink this, and I'm still freaking out about, oh my god, am I doing this wrong? So how was the prep? Like I would say the worst part of the prep was drinking the actual liquids, like. Oh, like my friend warned me and she was like, get the one with the flavor. If they have it, get flavored ones. So they both said they had flavor, but only one of them tasted like they actually had flavor, like orange flavor. And like you have to drink like a little bit. Of, well, I don't know how the prep is where you live. I don't know. This is what I had to do. I had to drink a prep like a, like a small like cup of one and then I had to drink like the big one liter one at 7 p.m. And I was not okay. That one tasted so bad and I was just like not okay. I was just sitting on the couch hating life and you have to drink it within the hour. Like So my procedure was booked for uh, 12 in the afternoon. And so I had to start my prep like at 5 p.m. the day before, which was really annoying. I wish I had like a morning one because you have to fast. And so I was like, I'm not starting the procedure till 12. And then it even said like, that's the time that you're being admitted into the hospital. That's not necessarily the time that you're going to your procedure. So I was like, I knew it was gonna be a long day of not eating and I was like, <laughs> I just want a taco. Okay, it is time for it is time for lunch. So, we will chat and eat. But honestly, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and that says a lot because I was expecting it to like be comparable to like when I've had the worst food poisoning ever and was just on the toilet and felt like I was going to like throw up and vomit at the same time. That was way worse than what this prep was for me. Um, so I don't know. Like, the lady that I talked to at the pharmacy, she said it wasn't that bad. She's like, oh, I just considered it like a detox. So, you know, 
I don't know, maybe look at it that way. I don't know. You really gotta shift your perspective on it, I think. Oh yeah. Another thing I was really stressed about was the label. One of the prep drinks said like, can cause life-threatening dehydration. And like, when I say I read that and it was like imprinted in my brain. And I was just like, it's gonna happen to me. Yeah, I'm gonna get life-threatening dehydration. I was so freaked out. I was drinking so much water. I was stressed drinking water. I was just like, oh my God, uh, life-threatening dehydration. Life th like, uh, which is like so excessive, like calm down. Like in hindsight, I'm like, okay, that was a bit much. But like, you just don't know how your body's gonna react. Like, am I gonna be the 1%? Like, and then I read something else and it was like don't drink just water because obviously like your body needs more and like the minerals and stuff so I was like oh my god but like cuz like I don't mind water I'm not one of those people that's like oh my god water tastes so boring like I drink water all day and then I was like oh my god I need to drink more than just water I'm gonna have life-threatening dehydration and so I, I got some apple juice and so I was drinking that as well so I drank water apple juice and tea and I was like okay I felt a little better that I was like getting all my fluids in I was peeing a lot stay hydrated friends You know what time it is. <laughs> yeah, yo. I love this stuff. So I usually use Cholula hot sauce, but Cholula has all this extra stuff in it, unfortunately, and it's really annoying. Like, fine, it should just have, like, peppers and water and maybe, like, garlic powder and stuff. They have garlic powder in this, but, like, it should just be basic, like, they don't need to be putting all that filler and crap in it, so... Find you a clean hot sauce. Like, I'm I'm sure there's cleaner ones than this. Also, link your favorite hot sauce in the comments below. Actually, don't. <laughs> I'm so annoying, because it's like, I don't trust other people's recommendations, because I'm very picky with my hot sauce, because I don't actually want it to burn my mouth. I want it to add flavor, like Cholula is like a flavorful hot sauce. And then there's hot sauces that are like literally like I'm here to kill your taste buds and to burn them off and I'm not about that. So like I like hot sauces that add flavor. I'm not here for all the heat, okay? <laughs> Thank you. But at the end of the day, when it comes to the prep, just do the prep, you know what I mean? Just just grit the teeth and do it because you don't want to have to do the procedure again. You don't want to have to waste a whole day and get sent home. You don't want to, like, you... I'm imagining you're getting this done to get answers or because there's something going on with your health. And so that's way more important than, like, missing your favorite drink or your favorite this or, like, like the burrito bowl is going to be there when you get back. You know what I mean? I will also say when it came to the prep, I was just bored very quickly because it was just like basic foods. I took the list that they gave me and I just like meal prepped off that list. So I created three different meals that I could eat and I just did that and kept it simple. But I don't usually eat a lot of white bread and pasta. I eat like buckwheat pasta. Um, or like seeded breads if I do eat that and so I felt very heavy very quickly So when it came to the actual procedure, I was really like feeling stressed. It was nerve-wracking I didn't know what to expect. I also didn't know what to expect because I'd never been to this hospital So it was just like it was just like the extra stress on top of it And it was like the day of the procedure. I knew I couldn't eat. I was hangry It was just all the feels, you know, the doctor also got caught up in surgery So he wasn't able to do the procedure so they had to find someone else So I was waiting for a while I was probably waiting for a couple hours before they could find a doctor and then but at that point, I was so hangry, and I was just so tired because I I was I was up till like midnight. I thought I wasn't going to get any sleep the night before. I forgot to say I thought I wasn't going to get any sleep the night before because of all the prep and constantly going to the bathroom. But it wasn't as bad as I thought. I think I stayed up till like midnight, going to the bathroom, going to the bathroom. I went through a lot of toilet paper, and I used flushable wipes because I needed that nice soft. You know, it was supple. Is that the word supple? <laughs>
Once they finally found a doctor to do the procedure, it all went pretty quick and I was like so tired so I was like ready for them to put me under. The anesthetic that they gave me was not a full one, although it felt like a full one. Like it, I don't remember anything and I didn't hear voices or anything, like nothing. But it kind of wore off like within the first hour. I just felt a little tired like on and off for the next two days. I woke up in a different room and then they had me sit there for a little bit and then I got changed. Then I got moved to another room where they gave me some snacks. They gave me a little sandwich and some apple juice and some water. And I don't know what it's like in other hospitals in other countries or how the, this would have been done in the US. But here in Australia and Melbourne, that was they moved me to the other room and I got myself a little sandwich and it was great because I was hungry. And so I just sat there for a little bit and then I was able to go home. Um, but yeah, after that, like we picked up a cheeseburger on the way home and I just chilled on the couch and it was great. I think I had a little bit of a sore throat, but like for the first hour or two, and then I was just like tired. <laughs> They did a good job, I survived. I probably stressed a lot more than I should have, but I got it done, okay? I'm just glad that I went into it feeling informed and that I put in the work and I made sure I did the prep properly and all of that kind of stuff. It is something that I hope I never have to do again, but I did it and I'm proud of myself for that. And I survived and it really wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. So I want to know, have you gone through this as well? And what was your experience? I hope you didn't have a bad experience, but if you did, share it in the comments below. If you are someone that's prepping for this in 2023 or beyond, what is your biggest concern? If I can help in any way, I will share more of my experience. I hope that sharing this has helped someone in some way, and maybe it was just entertaining for you to hear my experience. If you are someone that is prepping for something like this, please be gentle with yourself. Remember, take it one day at a time. If you're feeling nervous, that is completely normal. Just do your best to educate yourself on what is needed and what you can do to make this as smooth as possible. And keep reminding yourself that it will be over. This is temporary. And just do the best you can to do the prep properly to the best of your ability. Take a deep breath and remember that you've got this. I am sending so much love out to anyone who is on the path to finding answers on their wellness journey this year. So thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing and I hope that you will tune in to another video soon. Bye!